Okay, thank you. I'd like to talk about a nice extension to passing expression grammar today. So, first of all, I like passing expression grammar because they are simple and expressive. Here is a syntax definition of the passing expression, which can specify many more complex grammar. The one of the wonderful things is PEG is its operational semantics. Each of passing expression can be the functional, uh, pass a function that takes the input and returns op optional strings, which means a success or a failure. And as a result, we can easily generate the recursive descent, descent passes with backtracking. And backtracking is sometimes a very problem because it uh, causes uh, an expression exponential time cost in worst cases. But uh, as uh, previous speakers explained before, uh, linear time passing is guaranteed due to the packet parser. And uh, this study's goal is uh, make uh, pegs more powerful. And uh, my focus is on the context sensitive dot dot dot. What is a context sensitive dot dot dot? Let's consider a simple XM example. Here is a peg. Okay, I'm sorry. Here is a peg, which is uh, to be the XM grabber. And uh, non terminal tags matches example. But how about this? This is something long, a long XM example, because the closed tag is a different opening tag. So, but unfortunately, uh, this grammar also accepts uh, this language because uh, this XM, because uh, tags matches bars. So, this peg is not exactly XM grammars. So why such things happen? The reason is simple. The second tag depends on the past result of the first tag. That's why uh, first tag. And why we focus on the context sensitive syntax patterns? Because they, are, they appear everywhere in popular language. Here's a typical example. X, oh. XML, the C, C++, Python has an intent-based intent code layout, and the Ruby has a Ruby and Pals and other script language has a here documentation and C Sharp has a, some context sensitive keywords. And here I want to protect pegs from misunderstanding. So this is not only pegs problems, but also the context free grammar has same limitations. And uh, Parser Generator has a practical solution called semantic actions and semantic action uh, is uh, a semantic actions are uh, embed action code embedded in a formal grammar here is uh, some example of the action, semantic action and java codes are embedded in the, in the grammar specification and due to the program the code the developer can extend any parser behavior uh, and uh, so this technique is very common, probably started from the YAC and accepted many parser generators. But uh, in context of the passing expression brothers, backtracking, backtracking makes the writing code more difficult. As easily imagined, action code can change the parser states. And when backtracking happens, the change states must be back together. That's a very difficult. And uh, two significant backtracking support are studied in the context of the pegs. That is a uh, seminal peg based parser generator, which takes the transactional data approaches, providing the commit about APIs. And using these APIs, the grammar developers can write a semantic action like this. And Autumn is a recent peg-based parser generator presented last year's this conference, 
which provides uh, unified operators to manage statement, states. Snapshot, restore, call, sorry, apply, diff, <laughs> and merge. These uh, operators would automate the state management, but context sensitive matching relies on the writing action code. Our approach is uh, our approach is uh, taking uh, our approach is uh, declarative approaches. We have no action code. Instead, we provide a single unified data structure for representing states. It's called a symbol table. And the symbol table is designed to recognize many context sensitive syntax patterns. And finally, we define the annotation based extension of the peg, like this. I will show you the idea with such a previous XML example. So, here is a SPEG version of XML Grabber. Difference is two annotated non terminals. First annotated with a symbol, and second one annotated by Machi. And I'll show you how it works. These pointers stand for the parser position, and blue box stands for the symbol table, and this means an empty table. And let's start parsing. When the parser comes to the first tags, the parser captures the substring passed by tag and strike onto the symbol table with a name binding. And the names is simply the same as the non-terminal names. And parser moves on the next tag. Sorry. This time parser matches a symbol on the symbol table looked up by the non-terminal name. In this case, the input and the symbol is the same. That means the parser matches successfully. I'll show you the failure case. Obviously, the input and the symbol is different. This means match tags fail to match. This showed how symbol tables work in the parser context. Next, I will show more complicated example. Here, PEG is modified, accepted uh, XM tags recursively. And we add block annotation to control scope of the symbol table. Let's start passing. The parser behavior is almost the same. Important thing is the captured symbol is never overridden. That is, the parser simply appends a symbol on the symbol table. And match annotation is designed to refer to the last appended entry on the symbol table. So in this case, we can match C. And after matching, when the parser is going out to the block, the annotations, the all entries appended inside the block is expired. Oh, sorry. And parser, and the next tag is matches. And the passing is going on. This is a fundamental behavior of the SPEC. And here you wonder too many annotations are not good, not good. But don't worry, there is a, here is a list of all SPEC annotations. And these, these annotations are classified as three symbol table mutation, symbol table scoping, and symbol table matching, which is uh, involved in no state mutation. And the contribution of my study is uh, SPEG recognizes many context-sensitive syntax patterns. And uh, SPEG is uh, also defined the formal operational semantics. And uh, uh, SPEG provides a safe integration to Packrat parser. And the implementation is also available. The first, uh, how many, uh, I'll 
to show you the how many context sensitive syntax patterns can be expressed and uh, can be recognized by SPACs. Let's see the another example. Indentation code layout is another example, another context sensitive example, which because the end of the block depends on the previous indentation. And here is a SPEC grammars. And uh, symbol indent and uh, match indent describe the same indent level. And definition indent use also use a uh, indent recursively, but it uh, ensures the deeper indent level. This is a uh, one example. And uh, type defined names are classic and a famous passing problem. Because um, in C or C++, um, I identifier needs to be passed differently depending on whether it is type or not. In type case, it is casting to T and not type is T minus A. And these types redefine the type statement. That is a very problem. And uh, here is the SPEC version of uh, grammar. And uh, here, instead of a match type name, we use uh, is a type name, which means uh, matching is one of the A entries on the symbol table. And the last one is a more recent passing problem. It's called a context sensitive keywords, where the some keyword, in this case await, depends on the where they used. Uh, sync the context. And here we use await as a flag to switch parser behavior. That is uh, turning on the await and testing await is true. And actually, the on-off switch is a very useful grammar idiom called conditional, we call it conditional passing. And SP can encode conditional passing constructor like this. And important thing is a flag is an empty string. That means you can insert conditions anywhere without any character consumption. So I presented three more examples. Here you are wondering what about something. Actually, um, many friends in Japan asked me the, what about uh, Haskell. I don't know why he, they are curious about Haskell, but uh, Haskell indentation. So as to answer this question, I should make the limitation clear. So the limitation is a no consumption. And this is a kind of design policy. Here, uh, there is a example, uh, some case, uh, SP cannot represent read n and matching n times. As, as, as I presented before, you can capture the size. And if you decrement the size, you could count 12 times. But again, the capture data is never computed in SPEG policy. This is a limitation. And uh, answer Haskell indentation question is no, because Haskell indentation indent requires a space, white space manipulation to calculate the depth of indentation. But if you dislike the SPEG policy, you may add something like symbol Haskell indent or something. <laughs> to be the honest, the previous version supported this <laughs> for Haskell user. And uh, I will briefly present formally the SPEG, the complete definition is presented in the paper. Yeah, space passing expression gives by the transition from input string to the remaining strings with a state transition, with state transition. And uh, states, state is represented by the symbol table, represented by a, a list of uh, non-terminal and string pair, and reference like the, this, and mutation only, mutation is a concatenation of uh, the string uh, list entry. And uh, using this notation, we can 
describe the uh, operational semantics of uh, all SPEG elements, uh, all SPEG annotations. And uh, one important thing here is a symbol table can be implemented a simple linked list, our simple linked list. Uh, rather than the, this, uh, okay, <laughs> I never see. Okay, I will turn to the how to the integrate backward parsing. So, backward parsing is, uh, oh, backward parsing is a version of the recursive descent parsing. Important is, uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, the peg is a simple, peg case is a simple because it depends only the input position input function. That's why the memorization table like, uh, like this. And uh, SPEG on the other hand needs a handle to state transition. So the memorization table is a uh, increase has an increased dimension. Also SPEG requires a state of backward parsing techniques. So I'd like to review the state of backward parsing briefly. For the inventor of the backward parsing, it's this problem. And his way is to increment the state counter if state changes. And if state changes, invalidated memos. And he, as he pointed out, this is too much invalidation maybe lose a linear time guarantee. And Robert Grimm's LAT takes another approach, that's a nothing. The, re the reason is uh, the effect of uh, state modification always flow forward through the input, never backward, and previously passed and memorized expression never not be invalidated. But is this really true? Okay, let's go back to the SPEG. What's the robot Grimm claimed is something like the functional dependency between the input x to states. And this is mostly true based on our observation because symbol matching follows a symbol mutation. And this seems we can reduce the memo table size significantly. However, unfortunately, uh, functional dependency is not ensured. We can easily make a counter example. But here, we can thumb constraint on the reduced memo table. We can handle it safely. The constraint is simple. Say only if s equal s prime. And uh, we can check, this can be checked at runtime. And if not, the parser can invalidate memo. So we can make it safe and memory efficient backward parsing for SPEGs. But there's one more important exception remaining. The conditional parsing creates two different states at the same position. And this is a really problem. However, uh, wait uh, here, the Boolean flag creates uh, at most two states. This means such a SPEG can be transformed as a normal peg. Here is a sketch of the transformation. Uh, although syntax increase, uh, syntax rules increase, but this is a better approach to the packet parsing. Finally, uh, we describe the uh, implementation. NESPASA, uh, SPEG is implemented with NESPASA, which is a part of the origami transpiler framework. It includes a declarative AST construction and partial DFA conversion and sliding window based packet parsing and also available to my GitHub site. And if we have time, the demonstration here, but <laughs> no time, so I want to skip demonstration. And finally, uh, SPEG is, I have presented the SPEG, a symbol based passing expression grammars. And it's recognized that many uh, context sensitive syntax patterns. And it's declarative and readable grammars. I'm not an English native speaker, but I think it's a very, quite readable. 
<laughs> Great reader. So if not, you don't think so, please let me later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>